Martin for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chemistry 121, and today we're going to be discussing polarity. <coughs> Not a mole. Not a mole. Not a mole. Can't make guacamole with it. I'm Joy Smokey, by the way. And we're going to be presenting this to you today. Okay, so polarity. We're talking North Pole, South Pole, East Pole, something like that. The polarity in this sense is essentially the strength of the flow of electrons between two things, be they between two different atoms or between different ends of a molecule. Of course, a strong flow of electrons is going to mean it's polar. A weak flow of electrons is going to be nonpolar. Okay, so basically then, depending on the strength of the attraction between two things, is going to determine the strength of polarity sort of thing. That's right. Okay. All right, and then we can further divide the polarity into two different types. Mm -hmm. There's bond polarity, which is the polarity between two different atoms in a bond. And then there's molecular polarity, which is essentially the overall polarity of a molecule that's the sum of the individual bond polarities. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with the bond polarity, and to do that, we need the help of the periodic table. Like so. <laughs> All right. Now, as you might remember from the periodic trends video, electronegativity increases as you go to the right and up, with fluorine being the most electronegative element. So, if you want to determine whether a bond is polar or nonpolar, you simply have to take the two different atoms and see where they are relative on the periodic table. So, for example, let's try the a bond between carbon <coughs> and fluorine. Do I need to pick that up again? Yes, unfortunately. I guess I'm just the holder guy or something. Mm -hmm. mm. Y'all need to hold over your face, though. Alright. Well, but I don't want to see them. Well, you're just looking at the camera. Uh -huh. Anyway. Anyway. So, as you can see, here's carbon, and then here's fluorine. Now, <coughs> Carbon is one, two, three spaces away from the fluorine. And usually when you have that wide of a gap, you know, two, three, like three spaces or so away from each other, that's usually a good indication that it's polar because carbon is further to the left than the fluorine, which means it's less electronegative than the fluorine. <clears throat> and so fluorine, being more electronegative, is going to take more of the electrons toward it. And going to go this way. Okay. And this arrow is to show polarity. You don't necessarily need to worry about drawing those as much. <coughs> but the conclusion to this is, of course, that the bond is polar. Okay, where fluorine is basically pulling the electrons from carbon, right? That's right. Okay, that makes <coughs> sense. Are we yeah. done with this now? Well, let's take another example, but I don't think we need the periodic table for this one. Okay. Let's try a nitrogen-nitrogen bond. <coughs> now, what do you notice about each of these two atoms? They're the same. Yeah, so do you think any one is going to pull electrons toward the other from the other one? I would think, <coughs> I mean, I would think of it like a tug war, you know, where yeah. you, know, you have two equally matched teams and nobody's going to win, so. Yeah, so overall, it's not polar. Okay, and that's nonpolar, right? Nonpolar, yeah. Okay. <coughs> So anyway, so essentially, you can determine bond polarity by where it is on the periodic table. And yeah, if you really want, you can, you know, subtract the electronegativities and find it that way, but usually it's pretty obvious based on what, where the placement is. And as we know, I don't like doing the math, so 
This sort of thing works better. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Now, we move on to molecular polarity. It's a little more involved. So, let's give an example such as this. So, here we have formaldehyde. Let's not worry about, you know, how we got the Lewis structure or anything, because that's not what this video is about. <coughs> that's a different video. Yeah. So, anyway, so here, we want to go get the periodic table uh. again. <clears throat> he doesn't pay me for this, by the way. I'm just, yeah. I'm a regular slave driver. But, anyways, so here's the carbon, here's the oxygen. Oxygen, by the way, is the second most electronegative element out there. And then here's the hydrogen, which has an electronegativity close to that of oxygen. So you can go ahead and put that down now. I thought it was carbon. Yeah, carbon is what I meant to say. Yes. So anyways. <coughs> Good for something. Yep. Anyway, so if we look at the whole molecule here, we're going to notice, you know, the C and H bond... We already said that was nonpolar, so, you know, I'm just going to put X's where CH bonds are. <clears throat> then we get to the CO bond. <clears throat> now, carbon and oxygen are pretty far apart on the periodic table, and oxygen is quite electronegative. Also, added to the fact that there are electrons here, lone pairs of electrons will affect polarity of a molecule. In which way? <clears throat> In that the end with the lone pairs of electrons is essentially the polar end. Oh, okay. It's where the electrons go. <clears throat> I guess that makes it's sense. where they already are, essentially. Got it. So, we essentially say that since oxygen is so much more electronegative and since there's all these lone pairs, mm -hmm. that the pole is going toward the oxygen. I gotcha. And then so, for the whole molecule, you know, we can ignore the carbon-hydrogen bonds and then, you know, we go toward the oxygen. So overall, the molecule itself is polar. Okay, so Kevin, I got a question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've heard something about a dipole before. Is that the same thing? Dipole. Yeah, something like that. Because, you know, you have the negative pole and the positive pole. It's just like north-south pole on the Earth. Okay, so or a magnet. dipole. So basically yeah. the same as a dipole. Or the direction is going, in this case, up. Yeah, it's going toward the more electron-rich portion. The north pole. Yeah. Cool. Now... We're going to come to this one, carbon tetrachloride. Now, before, of course, we look at the whole molecule, let's look at a bond. Okay. Periodic table. Uh. <clears throat> He's quite handy. You should get one. Anyway. Anyway, so if we look here, carbon's right here, chlorine's right here. Now, carbon is further up on the periodic table, but chlorine is a bit more to the right. So chlorine's going to be more electronegative than the carbon is. And so what that means is that overall, the bond, this is a very important part, the bond between carbon and chlorine is going to be polar with the dipole going toward the chlorine. Pay no attention to him. Anyways, so I that's, do what I gotta do. So that's for the bond. Now, if the bond is polar, let me ask you this: What about the molecule?